Hi guys, I thought I would do a bit of a Halloween hints and tips for you. It's something of a secret feature in Movie Zoo, and, uh, well, it's how to get the dragon. No, it's not. <laughs> okay, so I lied. There is no dragon in Movie Zoo. There is a hidden feature that I want to talk to you about though, and that's how to import an AVI file with transparency into Movie Zoo. It's how I did the axe just here, and what I'm going to do in the rest of this video is show you how to make the axe video with transparency and import it into Movie Zoo. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is uh, configure MovieZoo to be able to import transparency within an AVI file. So if MovieZoo is running, we have to close it down. And then we want to go to Notepad and we want to run it as an administrator. This is because the program files directory is protected and we need to be able to save the changes to the configuration file for MovieZoo to be able to import transparency within the AVI. So go to File, Open, and browse to C, Program Files, MovieZoo, MovieZoo Game, Config. Once you're here, you want to change from Text Document to All Files, at which point you want to select the default game .ini file and open it. Once you're in this file, you want to look for this tag here, b strip video alpha equals true. This means that the alpha or transparency within the video will be removed when it's imported into MovieZoo. So we want to change it from true to false. This means that the alpha or the transparency will remain once it's imported. So once you've changed this, go to File and save the change. And that's it. MovieZoo is now ready to import an AVI file with transparency. OK, so the second thing that you're going to need is an image editor that will let you save transparent PNG files. For the rest of this video, I'm going to be using Photoshop. However, if you don't have that available to you, you can use GIMP. GIMP is a free open source image editor that will let you save the transparency within a PNG. All you need to do is go to www gimp.org. Once you're there, follow the downloads link and get the latest version. The second thing that you're going to need is the experimental version of VirtualDub. Go to www.virtualdub.org, go to downloads and VirtualDub at SourceForge. You'll find there are two versions of Virtual Dub 1.10.0 Experimental. You can download either and that's it. That's us got everything ready to make our transparent video for MovieZoo. So now that we have our image editor and Virtual Dub set up, what we want to do is begin making our transparent AVI. So let's go to MovieZoo and what we'll do is go to create characters. For this demonstration, I'm just going to use the normal male character, but you could use anyone that you want. Edit the character by right clicking on him. Go to the hats category and select the axe in the head attachment. You then want to raise the attachment up as high as possible so the whole thing is visible above the head. Then go to create backdrops and create a ground plane. Edit the ground plane and make sure it can float in the air and turn the image to none so it can't be seen. Then raise the character up a bit and what you want to do is get the axe nicely within the screen area. 
and there we go. We don't need the cameras window. Now the next thing to do is go to video, make video. This does two things. The first is it activates the timeline mode so the character is frozen and not breathing and the axe is still on the screen. Static rather. The second thing is on Windows 7 is it activates anti-aliasing so we get a nice smooth edge on the axe attachment. Next you want to do print screen to take a screenshot. And then you want to go to Photoshop. Create a new image and as you can see it is the width and the height of the desktop. Say OK and you want to paste your screenshot in there. Use the crop tool to remove everything except the axe image. And then we want to use the magic wand tool to select everything around the axe. As you can see some of the axe has actually been selected. So let's just zoom in and we'll use the polygon selection tool just to remove the extra areas from the selection. And there we go. We have everything except for the axe selected. Just zoom out and now what we want to do is select the inverse so it is actually the axe that's selected. Copy this and then do File, New and this time what we want to do is create a image the size of our video frame. In this case that's 1280 pixels by 720 pixels. Say OK. As you can see we have a white background. Create a new layer and we just turn the background off and this gives us our transparency. Paste our axe in and you can see it's quite large and takes up most of the screen. However we can scale it down using the free transform tool. So let's just scale it down quite a bit. And now let's see if this will fit within the frame. Not quite. It's a lot below. You can move it up, but the bottom and the top are still outside the frame. Scale it down a bit more. And it's within the frame, but perhaps just a bit too big still. So let's scale it down a little bit more and position it in the centre. And there we go. This is actually our first frame for our transparent AVI. What we want to do then is go to File, Save As and change to PNG. Now I've created this folder Axe Frames which will just keep all my frames together in one place. And we want to call the file axe01. The next frame will be axe02 and then axe03. This is because it's an image sequence that will be read in by virtual dub. So we need to use this particular naming format. A name followed by a number. And by using 01 it means we can use more than 10 frames and keep them in order. So save this. We then want to do a free transform on the axe again and just rotate it round a bit. Apply this and file, save as, PNG and we're going to call this one axe02. Now we want to repeat this process again and again and again until we've had the axe rotating around 360 degrees. You want to aim for around about 20 4 or 25 frames. As a guide, it doesn't matter too much if you have 22 frames or 29 or 33. As long as you get to around about that mark, it will give a nice smooth video once it's imported into MovieZoo. So you just want to keep on going with this until you get all your frames done. So you can see I've sped this video up as I'm doing it, as it is a little bit tedious and repetitive. Okay, so we're now on the last frame 
Now, the very first frame, the axe was straight up and down. So we want to make sure the last frame is just before that, so that when we loop the video in MovieZoo, the axe will smoothly rotate around and around. So let's just save this very last frame, which, as it happens, is frame number 24. And as you can see, we have the axe going all the way around 360 degrees within these 24 frames. And that's it. All our frames are now created and ready to be imported into Virtual Dub. So now that we've made all of our frames, what we want to do is import them into Virtual Dub. To do this, we go to File, Open Video File, and we select the first frame. In this case, it's Axe01.png. Open this, and we can see that all 24 frames have been automatically imported by Virtual Dub. There's a lot of distortion in the background, but this is just because Virtual Dub won't display the transparency. However, once it's imported into MovieZoo, it will be transparent. What we then want to do is go to the Audio menu and select No Audio, as there's nothing to listen to in this video. Then, go to Video and select Color Depth. The decompression format needs to be Auto Select, and the output format to compress or display needs to be same as decompression format. We then want to go to the video menu again, select compression, and we need to make sure we're using uncompressed RGB slash YCBCR. This seems to be the only codec that will support the transparency. Say OK to this. And finally, we want to adjust our frame rate. Because we are on 10 frames per second, it means our whole video will be about 2.5 seconds long, so the axe will look like it's spinning rather slowly. If we change this to play at 50 frames per second, it means that we'll then have approximately half a second of video that, when looped, the axe will be spinning really fast. Finally, we want to convert to 24 frames per second as a normal play speed for the outputted video. Say OK. And that's everything configured within Virtual Dub. We can then go File, Save as AVI, and we're going to call it Axe.AVI. And again, we're saving to the Axe Frames folder. Click Save. And it doesn't take too long. Now we can go back to MovieZoo. And we have the scene set up here. What we can do is create backdrops, and because we're using a widescreen format, let's create a widescreen backdrop. Onto this backdrop, we can right-click to edit, go to the image, and go to import, and select axe.avi. Open it, and you can see here, we have a nice big axe spinning around. Obviously this is too big to use, but we can scale things down and adjust the size and the illumination of the video within MovieZoo. And there you go. We've now created a transparent AVI and imported it into MovieZoo. Well that's it. Hopefully you're now able to create your own transparent AVIs. What I showed you is just one way you can use this technique. Take a look at these videos for other examples. If you would like me to demonstrate or go over anything else, just ask in the comments below or write to me and I'll see what I can do. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, why not thumbs up it or subscribe for more. I'll catch you next time.